Number 48. Prove that the trajectory of a projectile is parabolic, having the form y equals ax plus bx squared. To obtain this expression, solve the equation, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so, so let's, uh, let's just draw a coordinate axis. All right, and let's draw a, a vector, a velocity vector. Okay, this velocity vector has a certain angle theta, and we'll call this initial, uh, this the initial velocity. Now that initial velocity relative to that angle um, has components to it, right? It has an x and a y component. So here's the x component. Okay, we'll call that vi sub x. And it also has a y component, right? There, that would be its y component right there. We'll call that vi y. Now let's just create two equations that relate these variables. Um, the x direction uh, velocity, the resultant velocity, and the uh, theta. So we know that the initial velocity in the x direction should equal the cosine okay, of theta. Actually, let me put velocity first. Equals the initial velocity, that's the resultant velocity multiplied by cosine of theta. Okay. Additionally, we also know that the uh, initial velocity in the y direction is the initial velocity vector multiplied by sine of theta, all assuming that the angle is relative to the x-axis. Okay. So we know those things. Now remember, in terms of the X frame of the problem, acceleration is always uh, zero, all right? It's a projectile motion. There are no accelerations in the X frame. Uh, therefore, uh, since there is no acceleration, all the velocities in the X frame are constant. So the initial velocity, whatever that's defined to be, or the final velocity, whatever that's defined to be. The, therefore, the average velocity is also the same thing as the uh, initial velocity in the X frame. Okay, now remember that the, the average velocity is the x displacement over time. So in, what I can do now is I can substitute this term on in for the average, excel, uh, average velocity there because all the velocities in the x frame are the same. So now I have the initial resultant velocity times cosine of theta uh, will be equal to now the x displacement over time. Now if I solve this for time, um, I get this equation. y is equal to initial velocity, the initial resultant velocity, that is, uh, multiplied by the cosine of theta. Okay, why did I do that? Well, hold that thought for one minute, okay? And now, as far as the y uh, vectors are concerned, so what we want to do now is we want to try to um, get, a, get an equation that relates distances in the y direction. All right, now remember there's one key here is that the acceleration in the y direction is not uh, zero, it's negative, right? Negative 9.80 meters per second squared. And therefore, uh, the velocities will definitely not be constant, right? So that being said, I can now create an equation that relates the y displacements, okay, to the initial velocities and the acceleration. Basically, I'm using equation number two at the upper right-hand side, all right? So uh, the displacement in y is equal to the initial velocity in the y direction times time, right? Plus one half times the acceleration in the y direction times time squared. All right, now let me just substitute this term on in for the initial velocity in the y direction. So we have initial, uh, excuse me, we have the displacement in the y direction is equal to the initial velocity vector multiplied by sine of theta, okay? That whole thing now multiplied by time, all right? Plus, let me make the plus sign a little smaller, plus one half of the acceleration in the y direction times time squared. Now here's the thing, why did I solve this equation here for time? Because I can now take this equation and substitute uh, this time value in for time in my y equation. And why can I do that? Well, because these times are equal, okay? They're the same, time knows no dimension. So meaning it's not an x coordinate or a y coordinate, it's just time, it knows no bounds. So therefore, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to now get a, an equation, right, that relates the change in y's displacement with the change in x's displacement. So I, I'm trying, that's, that's why I'm going to substitute this on in now for the t's, so I can get an equation with x and y variables in it. So now when I do that, let's write out the result. So delta y is now equal to the initial velocity times sine of theta, all right, multiplied by time, which we said is the x-coordinate Right, not the, the x displacement divided by the initial velocity multiplied by cosine theta. Okay, wonderful. 
That's going to be then plus one half acceleration in the y direction now multiplied by this thing squared, right? The initial velocity cosine theta squared. Okay, so let's cancel some items. Notice the initial velocities go away. And one other little math trick here. Look, you have sine of theta divided by cosine of theta. You have to remember that that is equivalent to tangent. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite that now. So instead of sine theta divided by cosine theta, I'm going to write tan theta, okay, times now x. Interesting. Now plus, right, plus my result from squaring that uh, term. Let's just distribute the square first, okay. So plus one half times the acceleration in the y direction multiplied by the x displacement squared divided by the initial velocity squared times the cosine squared of theta. Okay, we're very close. Um, I mean, we can almost basically, I mean, we could probably stop here if we wanted to. I mean, I could I could translate this thing into, into well, I probably should really get this into tangent so I have the same trigonometric function here. So, um, okay, so let's do that. So recall the relationship that uh, secant, right, theta is the same thing as one over cosine theta. Therefore, 1 over cosine squared theta is the same thing as secant squared theta. So look what I have here. I have cosine in the denominator, right? So now I'm going to just substitute on in secant squared theta for the 1 over cosine squared theta, okay? I'll, change, I'll do the work on the left-hand side over here. So it's delta change in the y displacement is equal to uh, tan of theta x. Now plus 1 half acceleration in the y direction multiplied by, let's call it x squared, over now, initial velocity squared, all multiplied by secant squared theta, okay? Let me draw a little line down here to separate the work. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. It's a little line there, that looks good. So now, also remember this relationship, this um, trig, uh, trig identity that uh, secant squared theta is the same thing as tan squared theta plus one. So now what I'm gonna do for secant squared theta, I'm gonna substitute the tan squared theta, all right? So let's, uh, let's do that. So we have change in y is now equal to tan, uh, tan theta times x, right? Plus one half, so let me, let me combine these terms into kind of one fraction now, all right? So combining them it would be ay uh, times x squared, okay, ay times x squared, all over 2 times the initial velocity squared, and then that thing multiplied by tan uh, squared theta plus 1, okay? All right, we're getting we're getting close here. I mean, we're pretty much almost, we're, we're, we're basically done here. I mean, all we got to do now is just kind of, you know, put the, uh, put some values together, but well, yeah, I'll do it anyway, all right? So, um, all right, so change in y now is gonna be equal to tan theta x. Right now let's uh, distribute. So we have basically, we have now plus, uh, what do we got here? a sub y times x squared. That all times now tan squared of theta all over 2vi squared, right? Now, this is going to get a little messy. I'm going to run out of room here. Um, all right, so let me just backtrack for one second, guys. Sorry about that. All right, one second. So basically right here, I'm just going to, I'm just going to, the rest is all going to be constant, so just take a look. So basically, we have this down into the form that we need already. I just got to make one minor adjustment. So here we have the y, and here now we're equal to the a, that's the tan theta. We know we'll we'll know the angle here, okay? Because we have to in order to make this work. Here's my x, okay? Plus then, now after you do some math reworking that, basically what we have it here's the squared term, okay? So this will work out to be. If you notice, this is all a constant. Basically, it's you know, let, let me let me let me give it to you this way. So it's basically a y. Okay, uh, times tan squared theta, sorry, plus one, 
all over 2vi squared, and that whole thing now is multiplied by my x squared. So this whole term right here is really my b, okay? So, so there's the formula, right? So we got y, y is equal to ax plus bx squared. And that just now proves that the, um, that the trajectory will be parabolic in relation where, y, where uh, x, excuse me, where y is a function of x and blah, 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 blah. But uh, this, to see the application of this, uh, you would want to take a look at number 37. And there's a few other problems here in the book two in the 40s that apply this uh, particular um, method to solve the problem. All right. So guys, listen, thanks for tuning in. Hope this helped. Please do subscribe and I'll see you in the next lesson.